Hello and welcome to vlog number 15. In this one, I'll talk about what's new, our recent wedding, upgrading my vehicle, recommended viewing, and finally tool talk featuring some new tools. I've mainly been working on a lot of home related stuff lately. I fitted this PVC door to the workshop to replace the old wooden one. I have started demolishing a concrete slab that used to have the conservatory on top of it, which we demolished in a recent video. Originally, I was going to leave that slab in place, but following reading some of the comments you left on that video, I decided to take it out. There'll be videos about those projects coming soon. Not a whole lot of woodworking going on right now, if I'm honest, but I still have a list of projects as long as my arm. A few people have asked what's going on with the van conversion project that I started and posted a few videos about and it's unlikely I'll post any more videos about it. Basically, the owner has done quite a bit of work to it himself since I posted the last video, and while I may or may not get asked to do some more work to it later on, it's obviously now not going to be a complete series of videos from start to finish. So apologies to anyone that was hoping for the next episode, it's not going to happen. It might not be my last venture into van conversions though, as it is something I'd like to do more of in future, but we'll see. On June the 12th, Ria and I got married. You might have already known about that if you saw the ring box video or the cake stand video. And I thought I'd share some photos and some video with you as a few people have been asking. If you're not interested, totally understand and you can skip ahead to this time on screen now. The ceremony itself wasn't great, if I'm honest, due to some quite ridiculous rules that the venue had come up with, for which they blamed COVID restrictions, but I'm not going to talk too much about that. Obviously, it was a pretty small event as we were only allowed 11 guests. It certainly didn't ruin our day though, as then it was off to a really nice local pub in the centre of Norwich to celebrate with some of our family and friends, where we were allowed 30 people. The weather was great, so we spent most of the afternoon out in the beer garden. It was a really good day, and I hope our guests enjoyed it as much as Rhea and I did. And then later in the evening, when the sun had set, we went upstairs to where we had a large room booked for more drinking and some good music with our friends. A friend of ours called Adam, who's an incredibly talented videographer, also filmed the day and did an amazing job for us. If you'd like to see that, I'll leave a link to his YouTube video and his channel down below in the description box. Please check it out. So I've been having a lot of issues with my 14-year-old Vauxhall Combo van lately. It's had a new alternator, new battery, new wheel bearings, new brakes, a new handbrake, a new turbo. So it's been in and out of the garage a lot for repairs. And as we live somewhere quite remote now, and as my wife doesn't drive, it made sense to start looking for something newer and hopefully more reliable so that we don't keep getting stranded at home. I'm sad to be getting rid of the combo. We've had some adventures and I'll probably never find a new vehicle that is quite as perfect a color as this one. My search for a new van took lots of twists and turns and I was doing a lot of research and spreadsheets trying to figure out the best option for me. In phase one of my searching, I was initially looking at doing a lease hire of a brand new van, but then I later decided that buying a second hand, but as new and as low mileage as possible van was a better option for me. Then there was a phase when I was toying with the idea of buying a larger van so that I could fit full eight by four sheets inside. But the problem with that is that I often need to drive down very tight alleyways and park in very tight parking spaces when I'm on landlord duties at my old house. So I really wanted as small a van in size as possible. I did a lot of measuring up to see if it was possible to get an eight by four sheet into a small van, but I couldn't find a solution, even with a long wheel base version of a small van like a Transit Connect LWB that had a folding bulkhead and a front passenger seat that folds totally flat. I still wouldn't be able to fit a full eight x four sheet inside diagonally as the corner of the sheets would hit the shelf above the driver cabin. Eventually I came to the conclusion that the smallest van I could fit an eight x four sheet into would be a VW T6 and they look great, but ultimately I decided it was too big for what I needed. Then there was a phase three where I started looking at small short wheel based secondhand vans and I test drove a few, including a Citroen Berlingo and another Ford Transit Connect and also a Peugeot Partner. But then kind of at the last minute, there was a phase four where I decided that I could really use some passenger seats because at the moment, if Rhea and I are driving somewhere, we can't ever give anyone a lift or anything like that, which is annoying, especially as it's our only vehicle. Plus in the longer term, we might start a family. And as I wanted a vehicle that I'm planning to keep for many years, I then started looking at some of what they now call leisure activity vehicles, which are pretty compact in size, but they can be converted into having as much storage space inside as a small van. In the end, my criteria was I had a budget of between 10 and 15 grand. I wanted something 2017 at the very oldest, low mileage, i.e. under 30,000 miles. 
folding flat passenger seats, including the front passenger seats so that I can get long lengths of timber inside. And I also wanted some gadgets that I've never had in a car before, like air conditioning, good phone connectivity, parking sensors, stuff like that. In the end, there were three options that seemed to fit what I wanted, a Citroen Berlingo, a Peugeot Rifter, and a Vauxhall Combo Life, which, as I understand it, are all more or less the same vehicle on the inside, just rebadged and with some cosmetic differences. I couldn't really find anything locally to me that ticked all my boxes, so I ended up looking online and I found one on Kazoo, which is an online secondhand car retailer who basically deliver to you and then you get seven days to decide if you like it or not. And at this point, I was getting fed up with searching and driving myself and Rhea crazy with spreadsheets, so I just bought it. So say hello to my new 2018 Peugeot Rifter with around 13,000 miles on the clock that came in at just under 15,000 pounds. This is obviously a huge upgrade for me. Initially, things didn't go smoothly with Kazoo. Basically, the day before it was due to be delivered, they said there was damage to the bumper that needed to be resprayed. But I asked them to just deliver it anyway, and they agreed to go ahead. My first delivery slot passed and it didn't arrive. So I called them and they gave me another delivery slot that evening, six to 8 p.m. And I got a call at five minutes to eight saying they weren't coming as there had been some mistake with the delivery. I was pretty angry and I was close to canceling the order, but third time lucky, it arrived a few days later. And to be fair to Kazoo, after speaking with a manager, I got some compensation from them for the missed deliveries and an extended warranty on the car. So things turned out okay in the end and I don't have any regrets so far. The only real downside for me now with this vehicle is that I'm going to need to be really careful when loading and unloading stuff as I don't want to mess up any of the interior with ratty bits of wood or old furniture. It's not like a van where you could just throw stuff inside and not worry too much about it. So I'll need to protect stuff with blankets and I'll probably get some seat covers too, but that should be okay. I'll also probably get a roof rack at some point just so that I've got the option of picking up eight by four sheets when I need to. I have seen the roof boxes you can get for storing sheets and they look great, but they're really quite expensive. Really impressed with the load space. There's actually more room in here than there was in my old van, believe it or not mainly because of the front passenger seat folding down totally flat. This video is sponsored by ITS Tools, who have just opened the ITS Outlet Store, home to some unbelievable savings on surplus stocks of power tools, garden tools, workwear, and more. With next day delivery when you order by 7 p.m. and over 19,000 five-star Trustpilot reviews, plus a price promise with Screwfix and Toolstation. And if you spend over 50 pounds and use the code RAG and Bone at checkout, you'll get a free goodie bundle. I'll leave links in the description box below. Thank you, ITS. Recommended viewing. This is the segment where I'd like to recommend a few YouTube channels or videos that I've been enjoying lately. The first is a channel called Proper DIY, which has seen a staggering amount of growth considering it only started about seven months ago and with less than 30 videos so far. But I'm not surprised as the videos by Stuart, who is the host of the channel, are really professional and well-paced and the quality of the content is second to none. Stuart comes across as a great guy, really knowledgeable, and he covers a good range of DIY jobs around the home, garden, and workshop, and he does a proper good job. Please check it out, links in the description box below. The next channel I'd like to recommend is Pocket83, and the videos on this channel never fail to inspire me and really spark ideas and creativity for me in one way or another. It's a pretty big channel with videos dating back 10 years, and I've been enjoying it for as long as I can remember. You can expect videos about puzzles, geometry, woodworking, but most significantly, I think, resourcefulness and creative thinking. Pocket's recent triangle tea puzzle video, the giant octahedron of marbles, epoxy casting metal hands and hummingbird feeders would be my recommendations as places to start, but he has a channel full of other videos that are just as inspiring, plus a second channel with some great content too. Again, links down below in the description. Please check them out. Tool Talk. The first thing I'd like to mention is this picker pencil, which I think cost me almost 20 pounds. Why would you want to spend 20 pounds on a pencil? Well, that's a really good question. The main thing for me was the fact that it has a holster. I get really annoyed at myself for putting a pencil down wherever I'm working. And then there's that, where's my pencil gone moment? Can't see it anywhere, have to go and find another one. I'm sure many of you can relate to that. And I'm now training myself to put it back in its holster every time. And the holster's always attached to my trousers. And the holster holds it really well, even when you just drop it in and you don't push it down fully, it grips it somehow, maybe magnets, I'm not sure. The holster also has a pencil sharpener built into the end of it. So whenever you need a sharp point on the end of the pencil, you've got it to hand and you can immediately sharpen it. 
Another thing I really like about it is the thin shaft, which works great for being able to mark out lines on timber by using your fingers as an edge guide. The LEDs are replaceable, hard wearing and long lasting, but also quite expensive for what they are in my opinion. The only thing I don't like about it so far is that sometimes I grab it by the end, this green piece here, and the top pulls off. That's actually where you refill the LEDs. But once you get used to just grabbing it by the black plastic bit, then it's fine. Aside from the price, I really like it. I have a new Milwaukee tool, which I'm not going to reveal just yet as that will be covered in a future video, but I can say it's pretty incredible. Recently, myself and Leo from the Hand Eye Craft channel were invited down to Milton Keynes to visit Merca headquarters, where we learned loads about abrasives and tools. We got to try out some tools too, and we got to question them about the reliability of the Merca DROS following our experiences with it. And I have an exclusive video all about that, which is available via YouTube channel membership and Patreon. And Leo also has a video which covers his thoughts about the visit. I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. Anyway, the good people at Merca gave us one of these roundy kit hand sanding blocks with dust extraction built into it. Pretty interesting idea and it works really well. You might have noticed in this video that I have new wireless lav mics as I wanted to improve the audio quality of my videos. This is the Rode Wireless Go and you get one microphone transmitter and one receiver which you can plug into a camera or audio recorder with no cables. It works absolutely brilliantly. I love it and I wish I'd bought it much sooner. There's only one minor problem and that's that these wind guards have a habit of falling off if knocked but there is a bit of a trick to getting them to stay on more securely. You just need to pull back the fur, push it in, and then wiggle it from side to side a bit, and then it holds pretty well. But yeah, really cool product. That's it for this one. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, plus get access to early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos, you can find links in the description box below to my YouTube channel membership or Patreon pages. Thanks for watching. Thank you.